Pristina, the capital of the United Nations-run province of Kosovo. On one side, pro-independence demonstrators. On the other, UN anti-riot police. And watching closely from the sidelines is Naim Rashidi, a local Albanian Kosovar working as a researcher for the International Crisis Group. These are ethnic Albanians who make up around 90% of Kosovo's population. The more radical have formed a group called Vetvendosje, or self-determination. They've grown impatient with the UN administration and the wrangling over Kosovo's future and are demanding full independence from Serbia now. We are here to say the people of Kosovo... Let... According to Glauk Konjufka, one of the protest organisers, they're not looking for trouble today. From our side, we guarantee that the demonstrations will be peaceful, but we cannot guarantee anything about police. The situation suddenly becomes more tense and UN anti-riot troops from Pakistan appear in front of the marches. The protesters, really, they wanted to pass through the road, normal road, to go, go back to the, to the HQ. And the police has blocked the road. For a few minutes, things threaten to get ugly and the anti-riot troops prepare to fire tear gas. But the barriers are moved aside to allow the protesters through and tensions drop. Naim tells me what probably would have happened if the police hadn't backed down. It could have been very bad. Automatically the protesters will start attacking the police, throwing to the main building everything they have, and could have come even dangerous stuff from backside, out of, not as a part of protesters, but throwing to unmake whatever it could have been. So it's quite it's a close, it's very, very close, and the, and the police managed to, to avoid it in the last minute. Naim had called the police commander on his mobile from the middle of the demonstration, pleading with him to move the police aside. He knew exactly how bad things could have got. The next day, in the International Crisis Group office in Pristina, Naim and Alex Anderson, the group's Kosovo project manager, are playing me footage of a similar demonstration last month. Police, as you see, was not advancing, moving toward the crowd in order to make them spread more and more. They were just got staying in the same line and shooting, nothing else. Look at it now. It's like a turkey shoot. I was really quite shocked when we first saw the footage. The 10th of February, and Vetvendose protesters were again confronted by troops from UNMIC, the UN mission in Kosovo. The protesters' path had been blocked, and as they tried to push through the UN police lines, things quickly spiralled out of control. UN peacekeepers started firing. Two unarmed protesters were killed outright by rubber bullets and around 60 injured. They were shooting crazy. Hundreds and hundreds of tears gas bullets. Italian UN police drag away this protester after he shouts pro-independent slogans at them. The whole operation and how it's conducted and even the, the bringing of the Italian Carabinieri um, up behind the demonstrators, so in, in effect a sandwich them between uh, the, these Polish and Romanian forces and, and, uh, and, and to effectively just squeeze them. It, and this, this random shooting, it all had a punitive feel about it. 
uh, if you can think of any headline things that might have changed since we, we put out our reports in, in late 2005, what would they be in terms of... While the crisis group has a high-powered executive that lobbies governments at a senior level, it's in offices like this all around the world that the most fundamental work is done. We're a field-based organisation. You know, uh, the roots of our reports are found in the research we do down at, at ground level. And ultimately, you know, the benefits of those reports we intend also to be for the people at ground level. And as the group's project director here in Kosovo, it's Alex's job to come up with ideas to prevent the region from slipping back into open conflict. I'm not defending any institutional interest in, 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 Kos in Kosovo or, or, or elsewhere. Ultimately, I, I have freedom to be able to write uh, reports based on how, how I see um, the, the possible ways forward to actually resolving the, this conflict. It's going to be a very long road, uh, road getting there. To do his job, Alex has to be well connected in the region. And as it turns out, he has a very personal link to one of the demonstrators killed last month. So I, I saw his photo and name in the, in the paper and I just couldn't believe it. I thought, this, 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 is, this is my former landlord. Um, you know, he was, um, he was sort of quite a quiet, sort of reasonable guy. And uh, where he was killed was obviously in the very first moments of confrontation in the demonstration, right, right at the very front of where, um, where the protesters clashed with the UNMIC riot police. And uh, he was hit by a rubber bullet fired straight at his face. It was hit him here and unfortunately penetrated his, his brain. And um, he, he, he died. After their lethal clashes with the police, Vetven Dosi are in no mood for compromises with anyone. And Glauk Konjivka doesn't dismiss the possibility of war with Serbia. Maybe we cannot finish it with Serbia by demonstrations. But then we will look what kind of tools and what kind of organizations are needed to face with Serbia. Maybe even by war. Why not? If Serbia wants so, we're ready. Hot spots will be in this, in this side and also in this part of Kosovo. Ten years ago, there was war between Serbia and Kosovo Albanians. To avoid yet another bloodbath in the Balkans, NATO forces intervened and the Kosovo province was carved out of the former Yugoslavia. Around 16,000 NATO troops are still here. But according to Vetven Dosje's Libanaliu, nothing will be settled until Kosovo Albanians get their own permanent army. Whatever I see that uh... Serbia is planning to come back here and they are getting armed more and more. And whenever I see that UNMIC here and these artisans, they are not giving us the right to have army in order to, to defend ourselves from Serbia, I will keep weapon and I will hide it somewhere and one day I will take it out when they will come to kill my children as they did before. So there is no uh, chances here to the people to think for peace and to make a sure uh, kind of security for the future. There is no security for the future here. Whenever we don't have army, at first thing, in order to have peace here, we need army. A new army is exactly what's been proposed as part of a plan for Kosovo's future, put forward by the former Finnish president and former crisis group chairman, Marti Atasari. And this is most probably where that army will come from. During the fight with Serbia, ethnic Albanians formed the Kosovo Liberation Army, or KLA. After the war ended, to keep them out of trouble, former KLA soldiers were absorbed into a new force, the Kosovo Protection Corps, known as the KPC. Trained and supported by NATO, they're marching here today. But according to Serbia, this is a terrorist organisation. Alex and Naim have come to gauge the mood of the crowd. People have been content to let the KPC uh, tread water for the last few years, in a way that the KPC also has regarded itself as an organisation of treading water, waiting for the opportunity to again become uh, a military body. In, in other words, to, to pick up the baton where, where the KLA left off.
Today, former Kosovo Liberation Army soldiers are paying their respects to the dead. More than 50 members of the extended Jashari family were massacred by Serbian forces at the beginning of the Kosovo War, and they've become icons of the struggle for independence. General Suleiman Salimi, a former senior KLA commander, is now the head of the Kosovo Protection Corps. But Atasari's plan has been completely rejected by Serbia. What does the Atasari plan give the Serb communities in Kosovo? Will they accept that or will they en masse go? Or, I mean, it, it doesn't, they don't seem to be particularly pleased about it. Um, you're right. Kosovo remains a, a really hugely divided place with a majority community and a minority community that really do not talk with each other. They live in completely different worlds. Um, they speak a different language, literally. Oh, absolutely. And um, Kosovo Serbs, you know, seven, eight years after you know, the UN has been here, still regard Belgrade as their capital, do not recognize Pristina's authority. Very few actually come into Pristina. Um, they still regard it as a dangerous place, although I think it is far less dangerous now than, than it was maybe a, a few years ago. Just a few kilometres down the road from Pristina is the Serbian enclave of Grasenica. Here, the thought of independence and a Kosovo army is viewed with horror. Svima nama je ovdje u Gračnici teško, ne samo u Gračnici, nego u svim okolnim selima. Ovdje sa enklave ima i dosta, dolaze ovdje slobodu, ima i samo u Gračnici. Van Gračnice nema niko. Pa onda naša deca nemaju slobodu koji bi trebalo da napredu i da nauče nešto o budućnosti, a mi idemo unazad. To je to. Svi su uplašeni, svi kupuju parcele kuće i tako dalje tamo u Srbiji. Znači, malo po malo se iseljava narod odavde. Ako nema ostaje, to je to. Znači, ja koja nemam ostajem ovde, znači, i ne idem dalje. The largest Serb community in Kosovo is in the divided northern town of Mitrovica. We're driving up to talk with a prominent Serbian leader. But the town is literally cut in half with NATO troops and UN police patrolling a bridge across the river. This is the, uh, the bridge between North and South Mitrovica. Uh, we can't take our car over the road here. We have to get out and walk uh, because the car's got Kosovo number plates on it and uh, the police here won't let it across. On foot, we eventually find the office of Mamir Kasalovic, a Kosovo Serb politician with strong links to the Serbian government. He flatly rejects the Atasari plan for Kosovo and any idea of independence. Poznate kako najviše smeta ono što u stvari omogućava da Kosovo da Kosovo postane nezavisna država. Mislim to su te stvari, ovaj mislim da jednostavno da može da 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 samo da ima svoju vojsku, da ima ovaj da da pristupa i potpisuje međunarodne ugovore. Dakle, sve oni oni atributi koji Kosovo čine državom. Despite the complete deadlock between Serbs and ethnic Albanians, the crisis group has been able to make some ground in Mitrovica. We propose that um, there should be a Serb municipality in the north of the city. This got a very frosty, grumpy reaction amongst uh, Kosovo Albanians, uh, particularly here in Pristina, who um, really quite resented this, um, who have the idea that uh, you know, once uh, International Crisis Group writes something in a report, this tends to become reality. Um, but when they came to present their own proposals in Vienna, in the Artisari process for what to do with Mitrovica, what to do with the divided north. They effectively raided that very same report for, for their own proposals. So I, I think we are able to 
nudge the situation and influence it in, in good ways. But as in most other conflict areas where it operates, there is some suspicion of the crisis group's motives and on whose behalf it's really acting. I've heard it said that crisis group in some ways must be tied up with Western intelligence because the information it produces is so accurate and, and so on the money. Do you, have you come across that and has it caused you problems? Well, uh, I've, I hear from some critics the, the, the phrase that uh, the International Crisis Group is not a non-governmental organisation but a near-governmental organisation. And you know, there, there's... Um, I've, I've heard it said that it's a creature of, of Western intelligence in some areas, that, that, that's well, gone as far as that. I, I don't think that holds water. Um, the, the research that we do, you know, we do it ourselves. Uh, we do it uh, with regard to our mandate, which is conflict pre prevention, conflict resolution, and our own ideas about how best to, to realise that. Um, if we have good sources, it's because we try to talk to people all the time. That doesn't need to be the exclusive, uh, the exclusive uh, domain of, of intelligence agencies. In fact, we try to operate openly. Our product, the product of our work, we put it out on the internet. It's open for everyone to see. So so we try not to act like an intelligence agency, though I, I can see that why some people might, might regard us in, in, in that way. The plan for Kosovo's independence was put before the United Nations Security Council on Monday. But already it looks like it'll be blocked by Russia. And according to the International Crisis Group, if that happens, then it's going to be hard to contain the violence in Kosovo. Now if Kosovo Albanians see that this process is not working, um, if there are more delays in, in where they have a sense that um, the international community does really not have a sufficient weight of commitment behind this, that, uh, uh, that certain obstructions seem to be insuperable, that's the dangerous moment.